We just spent our last evening in Peru in a really exceptional place and we are only three hours away from the Bolivian border. We can see Lake Titicaca. So technically right across the lake is Bolivia. Hey, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. All right, perfect. It's very weird. This morning I almost puked, like the head was dizzy. And I think if like this hike taught me something is that those effects of elevation, they pass. We are Nick and Mathilde. And in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 521 and we are in Peru heading to Bolivia. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. We made it for our last week in Peru. We went out of Cusco after doing the Machu Picchu. Super nice valleys, nice road. And we crossed very cute villages. There's one just right down there with like people coming back from the field. Beautiful, beautiful. This is a archeological center and it's free to park and camp here. So we're going to camp here for the night. At the program of this week, uh, the last few things we wanted to do in Peru, starting with the colorful mountains of this region. Some last visits in Peru and our ultimate objective this week is to cross the border from Peru to Bolivia on the Lake Titicaca for some new adventures. It promises an interesting journey and spoiler, we will not be alone. Ta-da! All right, good to go. We're going to Rainbow Mountain today. We slept here at 3,800 meters of altitude and Rainbow Mountain is 4,000 above, even 5,000 above. It's called Rainbow Mountain because it got different colored sands and so it looks like a rainbow. All right, let's go see if the road is as nice as people have told us. Boom. We leave camp, cross a few small villages, already busy on the roads and in the fields. From there on, villages get smaller and smaller as we climb higher and higher. Crossing this field full of alpacas and sheep, and we couldn't reach it. We had to go to stop, go out, and take pictures. They're so cute. Alpaca! Failing to convince the alpacas to converse, we continue our way up the Rainbow Mountain. We just arrived, it is 4,700 meters altitude. It is not the highest Elbow has driven to, but it is incredibly nice and we've just arrived to Rainbow Mountain. Sunny, but pretty cold up here. <laughs> They're in t-shirt too. We got our tickets and they're very funny they're super cute they're like all rainbow colors with like a photoshopped vicuña and a photoshopped condor i really like those tickets they're worth the they're worth the, the 20 soles definitely it's not surprising it's that cool we see the snow all around i don't know if we'll find snow up there <sighs> stay warm 
I bet as soon as we start walking, we're gonna start really being warm, but this jacket, this will keep us warm. Okay, two kilometers up, 250 meters altitude. We're now at 4,750. Pretty incredible all around us. Very nice, there is uh, steep mountains, a lot of snow, and no trees, a lot of alpacas, some llamas, and you can definitely feel the altitude. All right, let's do this. No! You're in snow. That's better than why we didn't put our feet in snow. Yeah. We can already see the seven colors, or at least some colors. Yep. We can also see crowds of visitors on the mountain, but that challenge might be about to solve itself. We're almost at the, at the Mirador and our plan is functioning just well. Tons of people are going down now, so hopefully it's going to be not just for us, but not too many people. Almost there! We're up there! And Nick, look, you can even get sneakers on top of the mountain of seven colors. Ah, oh, maybe I should get one. Maybe you should. Last few meters, we're almost there. 5,000 meters right now. Up there should be 5.1. Let's go. Cheers. And cheers. Happy Rainbow Mountain. Yeah. Before, like maybe 10 years back, those mountains were covered in snow almost all year long. So no one knew that it was like full of beautiful colors. And it's only because snow is melting in the region and now it's like uncovering the mountains more often that we can see those colors. Crazy, no? Very cool. Very cool. Okay, now we walk back down to the Albatros, to the heat and then back down in the valley because it's freezing up here. Whoa! We're super lucky! It started raining right when we arrived at the car. So now we're doing this beautiful road all the way back down and we're heading... To Lake Titicaca, which is our last destination uh, before Bolivia. So we should be crossing to Bolivia tomorrow or after tomorrow. Let's go! Woo! Alright, let's go find a casual. Let's go find lunch! We find our usual side of the road lunch in a small village of the valley and we head east straight toward the Lake Titicaca through immense valleys stretching endlessly. On this road, we officially entered the Altiplano, the most extensive high plateau in the world right after Tibet. And we are going to stay up there all the way through Bolivia and until Chile. With the occasional disruptions on the road, it is already almost sunset and it is time to find a place to camp first. Right here. There we Next. go. Yeah. More or less. Tonight we had to find a spot alongside our road to like Titicaca. It's a lot of like long roads that go through those fields. There's not much, very very small villages, but the view is really nice. So here we are setting our first camp on the Altiplano under threatening sky and winds. Tomorrow the Lake Titicaca and Bolivia country 24 of our world tour journey. You know what they say, after the storm, 
the sun will shine again. We just spent our last evening in Peru, in a really exceptional place. We are uh, in the middle of a plateau at around 4,300 meters altitude. And we are only three hours away from the Bolivian border. I'm kind of nostalgic already to leave Peru because I really love this country. I know I want to go back one day, uh, but we've we spent quite a lot of time. And I can't wait to get to Bolivia because I know that it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be tons of new things to do. It's a new country and uh, we already have a lot of things lined up in the itinerary. Uh, big mountains, big deserts, salt deserts, uh, volcanoes. But first thing is the border crossing with Bolivia that also promised to be really fun because it's literally crossing the Lake Titicaca. Let's go for our last day in Peru! Let's go! <laughs> Titicaca. So technically right across the lake is Bolivia. We're so close. Last lunch in Peru. What's on the menu? More chicken, rice, <laughs> salad, fries. And uh, normally in about two, three hours we should cross the border to Bolivia. So this is our last lunch. Also we just got the papers for our insurance covering Bolivia and all the Mercosur countries, so all the countries in South America. So we were just waiting for that. We have them per email. We're ready to go. Nice. Buen provecho. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. All right. That's it for Peru. We go alongside the shores of the Sea Titicaca. Oops, sorry. The Lake Titicaca. All the way to a small peninsula where we cross the border after two months in Peru. What a milestone. We're now at the border uh, between Peru and Bolivia. Now doing the paperwork to come out of Peru. Now Bolivia side. Let's hope it's going to be smooth and fast. Immigration literally to two seconds. I think it's complicated for people from the US, but for us it's really a stamp and we get 90 days. So we're at the border and we have to fill up the vehicle information for the temporary import permit and I have to fill it out. <laughs> we just got into Bolivia. Woohoo! It was actually uh, pretty easy to cross the border. It took us probably an hour and we're in new country. Is it called country 24? Four, yeah. yeah. Um, super easy border. Anyway, super excited to be starting a new country. One thing though is um, the Bolivian fuel is one of the worst in the world. So we bought an extra, uh, we bought like four Coke bottles, big Coke bottles of three liters and filled them up with Peruvian diesel. We then got a jerry can from uh, Brazilian travelers who said here have it and it's 20 liters. So we filled everything up in Bolivia and hid them a little bit around the car. Um, and nobody checked, nobody checked the car. So we are hopeful that we'll only do one refill in Bolivia. Um, so that we really minimize the damage. That's it, apart from that we're in Bolivia and it's awesome. <laughs> so now as usual our first stop in the country is in the first town we find. Here it's called Copacabana, not the Brazilian one, Bolivian but still cute. And we need to find money which is called Bolivianos here and a SIM card. So that's the mission before sunset. Our money and SIM card run, taking a bit more time than planned, the sunset caught up on us. So we decided to postpone our boat ride of the peninsula 
for the next morning and found ourselves pretty spectacular camp right above the Lake Titicaca. First night in Bolivia! Woo! Woo! Well, we're parked at 4,100 meters altitude. It is super windy, very, very cold, but... Amazing view. Nice. Here we go. And this is Copacabana where we got our SIM and ATM and we crossed the border just behind there. We wanted to drone the place because it's gorgeous, but that's not going to happen tonight. Maybe tomorrow morning. Yeah. Now let's go get warm. Woo! Good pasta! A promise is a promise. Some images of our gorgeous camp spot in front of the legendary Lake Titicaca. morning no time to lose we are no longer alone on the road and we need to go meet our new friends first day in bolivia first full day in bolivia our camp spot was awesome we could like really enjoy the view on lake titicaca did you enjoy it yeah super windy at first but it got better and funny story is that when we went to the atm to get some money and get our sim card we saw this green troopy and we said oh we know these guys they're dutch uh, that we met in Cusco uh, very very briefly and then, so I wrote to them on Instagram saying hey if you guys want we could hang out and do a f bit of the drive together and they said yes that would be great and so here they are they actually passed us meeting them now and the plan is to drive uh, first out of the peninsula where we are so we're going to take a, a like, small road, it's going to be awesome and then hopefully we can go in the mountains and discover the mountains in Bolivia and that's going to be epic I'm very excited okay let's go meet them hey, hey. hi how are you? good good yeah. hi miss hey. how are you? Hey. good how are you? Yeah, it's very normal oh. we're always on time but Bolivia no, something no, else no. happened <laughs> till now but thanks to the Okay, we are officially a convoy. We're officially a convoy with uh, some, some cool Dutch people. Did you test the radio? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, perfect. Oops, it almost uh, feels like we're at the beach somewhere, but no, we're at 4,100. We take a long, windy road all the way to the port that will allow us to cross the Lake Titicaca at one of its narrow spots. The highest navigable lake in the world. But before the crossing, we stock up on fresh food. Three tomatoes. Yes. One cebolla and one of this. Okay. What else do we need? Uh, tu veux des oranges? No. No, I don't want oranges. Green beans. Uh, I think we're good, huh? Okay, that's fine, then if okay, you want so, any of this. Uh, so we arrived at the port where we're going to cross to uh, the outside of this peninsula that is basically locked by Peru on the other side. So to get into the rest of Bolivia, we have to take that boat. Barking on a barge, look at this barge.
All right, we made it. Now we have to reverse off the barge. They're gonna go first and then, then it's our turn. This is kind of fun, I like these things. That was really fun. Yeah. I would hope it happens more often. Son 40 cada uno, sí? Okay. ¿Tienes 20? Puedo pagar para las dos. Gracias. De nada. Ah. Pero es only one. Perfecto, señor. Chao. Chao, gracias. Cars unloaded, our first stop is the usual side of the road lunch, the first in Bolivia. That one we share it with our friends Mich and Linda. We took the turn on the dirt road and now we're going all the way up there into the snow mountains. Deflate the tires! It is time! into the local community which gives us the right to, to hike and set up camp in the valley. Rooftop tent versus pop-up roof speed contest is on. Test on. <laughs> Go! <laughs> Look at him! Oh, he's actually doing it! <laughs> <laughs> right. Go, go, go! Go, Nick! Go! <laughs> Making new friend, Mish? Yeah. Hola. How are you? Should we give him a name? Mish, an idea. Gunther. Gunther. Gunther the donkey. The alpacas have uh, joined us for the night. It's actually getting really cold up here at 4,400 meters. We're here with our Dutch friends, so we're going to start making dinner. And uh, there they are. And that's their rooftop tent. It's gonna be very cold tonight. What's for dinner? Pasta. Pasta? Pasta. Anything easy and quick. Cool. And good for the tomorrow hike. Oh, Shishu! Hey, Shishu! Pobrecito! He's okay. You're gonna go back with your family soon. Wanna talk to him? Alright. So we have Roger, the alpaca, here. Who's looking to his whole crew coming down there? Come down, boys! And the reunion happened. Friends, where were you? And as the day ends, it is time for everyone to go home including us sharing massive plates of pasta in the troopy of Miss and Linda to cover a bit from the cold. Hello, hello. How was the night? 
we didn't sleep super well because at 4,400 meter, almost 500, technically like whoa, the pressure is insane. Um, we weren't cold, but didn't sleep super well. All right, today we're hiking uh, five kilometers, 850 meter elevation. Um, to Pico Austria. Pico Austria with our two Dutch friends, Mies and uh, Linda. Camp Cruiser crew. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it because it is very high in altitude. Very cold water or not? <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> We slowly get acquainted with Bolivia's amazing landscapes and brutal elevations. And after a rather flat section, the steep slopes start and cut our breath. We are slow, real slow. Four thousand nine hundred meters. Beautiful. Out of air, out of energy, but happy. Glacier 1, Glacier 2, Contururi. I forgot the name of that. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> okay. Almost there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> Not obvious on the images, but there's some condos flying above our heads. It's just my lens is not uh, zooming enough to be able to see them, but that's pretty cool and gives something to look at while suffering a bit, but we're getting closer and closer. It's very weird. This morning I almost puked, like the head was dizzy and I think if like this hike taught me something is that those effects of elevation, they pass. I mean, at least for me, and I actually feel better now than what I did like 800 meters lower and three hours earlier without any effort. Five meters left. <laughs> 5,337 meters. Good job, guys. Even higher. How high? 5,337. 5,337. Woo! Good job. Boom. Incredible view. Good luck, Rock, at 5,340 meters. Nice. That's awesome. Bravo. Whew. We made it. What's the elevation? 5,337 meters, uh, highest we've ever done on this trip. <laughs> and it's incredible. It feels very nice to be up here, but super tiring. And it doesn't end here. No. Wait, turn a little bit the screen. Uh, where is it? It's over there in the clouds. No, it's over there in the clouds. No, it's over there. Those ones, yeah. So that was just a warm up. Cause next week, in next week video, we're going to attempt the climb of whatever is hiding in the clouds. 6,088 meters. And we have to go with, you know, axes and crampons. So we have guides obviously, but we'll see how it goes. We're super excited. But uh, I think it's gonna be very tough. And it's Mathilde's birthday present. Mm -mm. We'll try. If we can't, too bad, but we'll make <laughs> our best. See you next week. Bye. No spoiler. But next week adventure is probably the hardest physical challenge we have ever done. Subscribe to the channel to continue traveling on this world tour with us. See you next week!